Hey everyone, welcome to the Disambiguation Station, also known as The Bench. Ryan here. I've found a new favorite toy. This is the LCR-T4 uh, transistor tester, diode tester. It's sort of a universal tester um, from eBay, from Amazon. This is a, a very inexpensive and very handy little tool. And I've been playing with it and having, a, having some fun here. You can just stick in any component. Let's stick a transistor in here and press the button. And in a couple of seconds, like magic, we've got the pinout. We've got some pertinent information about the component. And it's really cool. It may not be 100% accurate, but it, uh, it can give you some help in times when you're in a hurry to know what you've got in your hand. I've been playing with this for a little bit. Just got it in the mail today. Uh, this is $10 at Amazon with free shipping and like $7 on eBay with free shipping. So depending on how fast you want it in hand, get it from one of those places. I'll link those down below if you want. But, uh, but this is a pretty cool little tool. Here's a capacitor. Let's just stick that in. And there it is, a capacitor, 136 nanofarads. Let's check it out with the multimeter and just see how close it is. Here's a good old flute multimeter. And take the same capacitor. I'll just stick it here. There we go, 125. This one read 136. Eh, fair. 130, well, we're getting closer. 131, wow. Well, okay, anyway, it's, it's reasonably close. Let's try something else. Let's try a resistor. We'll just stick a resistor in. By the way, this, this is numbered with three pins. So this is pin one, two, and three, and then it goes back to one, 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 one. You can also, if you have a surface mount component, let's, let's grab a surface mount. I've got some MOSFETs here. Here's an, I believe this is an in-channel MOSFET. We can just take this and, and uh, just press it. Whoops. We can just take this and press it right here on these pads and go right back for our button and as we hold it there voila and channel mosfet and it gives us the pin out nice that is really handy when you've got something this tiny and you want to know what it what the pin out is real quick um, i think i can find a lot of uses for this now let's grab another component here um this is something i'm not really sure what it is i don't know if it's a, a tiny inductor or if it's a little little power resistor or what so let's drop that in here i'll get it in say pin two there and pin one over here so let's see if we can get it down in there and fire away and it's a resistor so apparently if it is an inductor it's such a small value that it can't be detected um, looks like a 0.14 ohm resistor oh well all right some of the specs on this unit and i printed these awfully small so Looks like it. Um, this is the one I got from Amazon. Automatic detection of NPN and PMP transistors. Yep, that works. Uh, In-channel, P-channel MOSFETs. Yep, that works. Diode, including double diode. Uh, thyristor, transistors, resistors, and capacitors, and other components. Uh, automatic test the pin of a component and display on the LCD. Yep, does that. Can detect the transistor MOSFET prediction, protection diode amplification coefficient in the base to determine the emitter transistor forward bias voltage. Yep. Measure the gate and gate capacitance of MOSFET threshold voltage. Can simultaneously measure two resistors and resistor symbol is displayed. Hey, let's give that a try. I've got two resistors here. So let's just stick those in. I'll put, uh, let's see, I'll put them in one and two. And then I'll go from one and two. And I don't know if I need to go from one to three or two to three. So let's just go from two to three. How about that? There we go. So now I'll lock it down. So we've got two resistors. We've got one going from pin one to two, one from two to three. Let's see what we get. Okay, it did it. Well, it doesn't know the values. Uh-oh. Died. Try again. Hmm. That's weird. Let's take one out. It doesn't know what to do with that for some reason. Okay. Ah, there's one resistor. 10K resistor. All right, let's let's uh, let's try them. Let's put one to two and then one to three. Okay, so now I've got a resistor from pin, whoops, it's starting again. 
one to two and then two to three, or I'm sorry, one to two and one to three. Ooh, there we go. Okay, that works. So basically two resistors, both of them are, whoa, it's stuck in a reboot loop here or something, or am I doing something wrong? I'm gonna hold it out here so I'm not touching anything accidentally. Okay, so there's a 1K and a 10K. Cool, that could save a lot of trouble. Let's actually measure these manually. So here's the first one, should be a 1K. Keep those leads apart, oops. 998, 999, right on, 1K, there we go. And then here's the other one, this should be a 10K and 9.83, eh, 9.83, yeah, it's, it's close. Okay, so, I mean, the, the numbers on this little meter are, are, are close. They're not exact, which for what I'm working on and probably what you're working on, it's fine. Let's try something weird. Let's try, and uh, I've got a neon lamp here. Let's try this neon lamp. I'll go with pins two, and it's just easier to hit that one over there on the edge. So let's go with pins two and, and one. Oops, missed it. And accidentally hit the button. I'll press it again to restart. So we got in pin two and pin one. Oh, no unknown or damaged parts. So it doesn't know what to do with a neon lamp. Oh, well, that's something unusual anyway. I guess there's really not many measurements you could take. Here's an LED. Let's just stick the LED in there. Oops, I missed one of the pins. It's one of, one of the legs is shorter on this thing. So I have to curve it to the right. Here we go, and start over. Oh, we see the LED flashes as it pulses with different tests. There we go, we got our diode. We see which is the anode, which is the cathode, and we see the board voltage. Cool. So apparently this thing has, and looks like um, it's just a big LCD on the front. Got this little ZIF socket, and then the pads for the, the pin, pinless or, or surface mount devices here. Just got the one button, and then on the back, We've got an uh, AT Mega, let's see, that's a 368, I believe. I believe that's right. An AT Mega 368, and then just a few passives and stuff like that. So basically they're just sending a bunch of different pulses to these pins to try and figure out what's there. Uh, let's try something else, uh, sort of unusual. Let's try an inductor. I've got this empty little transformer here. It's uh, 110 volts to 13 volts. I accidentally broke one of the wires off of the this side, so let's do this side over here. This is the input to AC side, and I've just got, got it wired up to some longer leads here. I'll just stick these into pin one and two. Whoops, pressed a button there. My fluke is grumping at me because I haven't touched it in a minute. There we go. Start over. And there we go. We have an inductor, 1.4 ohms and 107 millihenries. Cool. That is very handy, especially since I don't have an LCR meter. I don't know how accurate that is, but I'll tell you what, let's grab some inductors we know the values of. So I've got some inductors here that are known values. I don't know what the uh, accuracy of these is, but uh, let's see. This is supposed to be 330, is that 330 micro Henry's? I believe that's what that says. 330 micro Henry's. Let's see how accurate that is. We'll grab one of these. We'll whack it into pin one. Well, right there. Pin one and pin two. Clamp. Okay, be quiet, flute. Okay. Uh oh. Went off. Maybe I have my fingers on the back of it. I'm shorting something out. There we go. Inductor. 0.28 milli Henry's. Well, so that would, it's somewhat close. I don't know how accurate these are, or I don't know how close they are. So, okay, let's try another one. Let's see. Here's, well, let's go through here. What do we got? One millihenry. Somebody's written that on there. Hope that's correct. And we'll go that go in pin two and pin one. Come on. 
Well, has it died? Nope. I don't think it likes my fingers on the back. There we go. Point, uh, 0 0.92 millihenries. So, so that's pretty close. Okay, cool. So that's going to be rather helpful. Let's see what else we can test with it. Here, I've got, an, got a really old transistor that one of my professors gave me years ago in school. And this should be an NPN. I think it's an NPN MOSFET. I don't remember. Let's see what we what we get. No, it's just an NPN transistor. Okay, cool. And then I think I've got the PNP counterpart to that same one. We can stick that one in and give it a try. Yep, there it is. Brilliant. What else we got to test here? Oh, here's a let's try a, let's try a larger capacitor. Got how about this one here? This would be a 100 microfarad capacitor. Let's give that one a try. Curves to the left. And off we go. There we go, 101.4 microfarads. We even have the effective series resistance there. Cool, very helpful. So I can see this as being a, a first order device that you would grab for quick identification of, of parts, uh, something that you grab when you, when you don't have more sophisticated tools in hand or near you. Um, I'm actually 3D printing a case for this. I found a bunch of cases on Thingiverse for these little meters. And I'm 3D printing one, and we'll take a look at that when that gets completed and get that, see if we can get it put together. So anyway, that's just a quick review of the of the LCR T4 meter, and I've got some links if you want to get one of these. I think it's pretty pretty cool and pretty much indispensable for your toolbox. So hope this is helpful, and let me know what you think in the comments. Talk to you later.